is your local bus company serving your football team. Buses run every 10 minutes. Avoid the traffic. Don't get stuck in the delay. Ipswich Bus is proud to partner with Talking Town. Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your Monday night Talking Town Extra Time. I am your host, The Gov, and I'm excited to be with you for, well, yesterday I said half an hour, and we went for an hour. So I'll say half an hour again now, and we'll see how long Talking Town goes this evening. It's the platform, as I said on Sunday yesterday, that you you, you think to yourself, right, you know, it's been a quiet week of football or the season's over or whatever the the, the week may have brought may have brought out or may bring and you, and you think uh, it won't be a long show tonight I always tell the missus or the contributors not a long show and then it goes several hours let's see what we do this evening we've got have got a nice little a few talking points for you we'll run through the final prediction league who made it into the point prizes the best of last night romeo zondervan craig forrest i will ask matt his favorite part of the special last night which if you haven't seen it um and you know of course it's a bank holiday weekend you may have been busy seeing loved ones but truly take the time to to either watch or listen to our to our talk to you special with Craig Forrest and Romeo Zondervan last night, the 91-92 title winners. Uh, it is available on, on our audio platform from midnight tonight. And of course, you can still uh, get yesterday's show on our audio platform as well. It's well worth a listen. It, it, it really, really is. What this, as I say, Prediction League, we've got the best of Zondervan. We've got uh, how many first team players does Matt feel we're away? Uh, and of course, the future of Elkham Baggett and Corey and Darby, the, uh, the latter being awarded Salford Supporters Player of the Year. Congratulations to Corey and Darby. Let's get a few comments. As always, yesterday's show was exciting, was bumpy. We had Hawks come on, dropping James Norwood facts, as he called them. I know Lee Anderson wants to come on and give the other side of the coin. So will he, will he appear? Will he answer the bell? I, I don't know. But that is something to, to look forward to this evening as well. I know the fisherman did try bless him yesterday, but I know Lee's a big fan. We've got Nick Muller. Welcome in. I hope you enjoyed yesterday uh, Saturday's ticket from myself and you enjoyed the players evening. Lee Brown and still good evening, Stephen Parry. Uh, emotional Ando has just popped into the VIP area. So uh, that is to come up, my friends. Uh, Nick Muller, look at teams in the playoffs. We're better than them. Sunderland's only decent team in there. Stephen Parry, we know our issue. Only two teams have conceded less than us, but about 10 scored more. Good evening. Uh, in the know, Irvin Fla- uh, Flaherty. Or in the note, Irv, I'll call him. Uh, Paul Chap. Look, it's a really, really busy chat. Before I bring in Mr. Grumpy himself, a huge thank you to our Talking to Town Fifth Standard Stroke YouTube members. Um, one of my major jobs through this summer is to is to really uh, find ways that we can truly give back to you, wonderful people that you see on the screen right now. The names on the screen. How do we give you? Uh, perks, what those perks are for supporting the platform. It needs to happen. It will happen. What that looks like will be announced in in due course. But truly, thank you for being you. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for, uh, you know, putting your hands in your pockets uh, and saying we like like the platform so much that that we're going to support you. Links in the chat if you want to do so. I'm going to go ahead and bring in somebody who I've just been told has been grumpy today. Uh, one of the seven dwarfs. It's grumpy. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, good evening. How are you? Fine, thanks. Do I look grumpy? <laughs> you, I've just been told, I'm well informed by a source yeah. close to yeah. the situation that you are incredibly jump, uh, grumpy. Yeah, yeah. And jumpy. <laughs> and jumpy. But you're incredibly grumpy. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, getting over me, I'm still getting over me illness. Not that league table then. Well, 
I look. I went for a walk today, and I was looking at the steps because you get the steps, don't you, on your on the health bit on your app you on do, the phone. Yeah. And it said like I had zero steps. It was like I've been dead for the last five days. Um. So I did. I did a thousand steps today. Is that a lot? I don't know. I don't know if that's a lot or not. You've had a cold, Matt. I've had, I, look, I've done a knee, I've done a COVID test every single day, thinking I've had COVID. It's quite negative each time. So how bad has the COVID got to be if this was coming up negative? I don't know. I don't. You've know. had a cold, cool. man. You've had a cold. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He's got nothing to say back to that, have you? You've just right. had a cold. Uh, James Reed. Good evening, Gov. Thank you for another fantastic podcast this season. This season, the best Brilliant. things can only get better. Absolutely. Um. I said in yesterday's show, Matt, that from a mm. personal point of view, I, you know, the end of the season is, is obviously incredibly mixed. But I was looking back at the match day tickets, um, and I, if, it, it's just flown by this year. It seems like yeah. only five minutes ago that we were discussing in the WhatsApp group what technology we will we would need <laughs> to take yeah. the match day tickets from this environment. Yeah, into the match day environment. This is like five minutes ago, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. And that first game we did in the fan zone, didn't we? It was Morecambe. Morecambe. And then, yeah. we moved to, then we moved to the statue, didn't we? Yeah, that's I tried right. Millwall, didn't I? And that looked like a, like I filmed it on a microwave. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? There was a few yeah. teaming problems, but we got there in the end. Um, well, yeah, we were still it. learning, even towards the end, weren't we? With the pre-game um, camera work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you always like. Uh, you're always improving, aren't you? Look, MW just put a thousand steps. I rode 50 miles this morning. <laughs> Is it Tour de France? It's <laughs> um, unbelievable. That, yeah, that is un unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's front been front going on. Okay, it's, it's, it's been it's been good fun doing the tickets. I noticed Lee Brown was hatless on the ticket when I was watching from the sofa on Saturday. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yeah, he something was... Uh, yeah, that's what it was. I turned up and I said, hello, Lee, you've had your hair done. And he went, <laughs> no. I went, well, something's yeah. different. I went, there's no app. So, you know. <laughs> the end, the end of the season, combined with my illness, whatever I've had, uh, the end of the season always makes me grumpy, especially the end of this season, because it's been a bit Are of a you're still talking but, about your illness. Yeah, but this, this, you know, I always get a bit grumpy at the end of the football season, because it's like, why? An integral part of our lives. You know, our holiday calendar, just like Rich's, is based around when town are playing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so is mine, particularly now, obviously, obviously do, doing the platform. Yeah. But, it's, but it's only, you know, a few weeks until the middle of June where the pre season yeah. returns. It's 30th right. of July is only 13 weeks away. Yeah. I'm just desperate for it to go fast forward because I think we're in for oh. a really good summer. Well, I hope so. I mean, that's wishful thinking, isn't it? Everyone say, I, I've, I saw on the show, it's great, it's great everyone's being optimistic and saying, oh, I think we can be top two next season. We can't really base that on anything at the moment because I think probably at least a dozen clubs are saying, supporters are saying exactly the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. 88 days, Stephen Perry oh, has just man. said. Uh, we go again. We're going to have Leando in a second in regards yeah. uh, to, to James Norwood. Um, He's got it, I, is he? Well, I, I don't know. We'll find out in a second. Yesterday, Hawks was on the show. Um, he 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 wasn't best pleased. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Matt. I haven't. But, I, I but long and it. short, long and short. Well, it's yeah. been a busy day at TT, obviously with with the with, with the special, which we'll come to a bit later on. But mm. long and short of it was he he was upset or frustrated because he he kept hearing fans say it's going to take three million as is the figure he kept, he said to replace James Norwood. So he brought up Norwood's goals. And yeah. Norwood's appearances. I think he yeah. said Norwood has made 57 appearances in three years. It's not, it's not that no. good, is it, really? It depends which shoots your town player you're comparing it to. If it was Teddy Bishop, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, but compared to, say, Macaulay Bond, who's almost played, I think, nearly 40 games this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, that's not great. Well, we, said, we said on the show uh, Friday, was it? We it's all bit like we were thinking like great Norwood moments. Probably him actually scoring on Saturday was one of the great moments. But up until that point, everything was kind of off the pitch, wasn't it? The wrestling, the the cans, the Stone yeah. Steve Austin thing, the coming on our show. There wasn't many highlights from him off or, on the pitch, unfortunately. That that counted for anything, i.e., sent us into the top two or part of a promotion race. They're the moments that where your goals count, don't they? They are, they are. Uh, and we, I don't think we've ever had a, 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 a player 
or certainly not not for a long time that's ever sort of been so marmite to so many that mm. has caused caused the talking points and and I, I, this for me i feel is is the line under the sand from my point of view in terms of the the norwood debate but we're all about balance on this platform and when yeah. we had hawks come on and then Lee messaged me on WhatsApp. I was very keen to get the other side because there is another side of the coin. And I'm very keen for balance in whatever we do. You yeah. know that more than anybody. So I'm going to bring in emotional Ando, uh, self-titled. <laughs> Hi, Lee. Yeah. Good evening, Hi, Mr. Anderson. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. A good bit man. Um, uh, the emotion isn't about Norwood leaving. It's, um, I mean, I can come on to that in a bit if you like. But um, I, was quite, well, I was quite emotional after the game. Or yes, the you were. I, I was, was say, last I time was, I saw yeah. you, Lee, you were swearing into a camera. Most, right. un, most unlike you, yeah. but you messaged me after to say to apologise, but to say yeah, it's yeah. the passion and the emotion. Just what is the passion and the emotion? Why were you it, so so emotional? It just caught me right at the end of the game. Um, I think it was the last minute, and um, the crowd started singing. I think that's when they had a free kick on the right hand side near the end. Two minutes had gone up. And it just, and I, I honestly, it I, it overwhelmed me. Um, and the re- I think the reason that overwhelmed me was because we'd had such a, and I, I messaged you the week before saying, I can't wait for the season to end. When you look at the league table, it's just gut-wrenching. Absolutely mm. gut-wrenching, isn't it? I mean, let, let's be honest. But there was 20, I mean, there was a couple of thousand, well, there wasn't a couple of thousand left by the end because some left after the second goal. There was a few thousand Charlton fans there, but there was probably what, 23,000 Ipswich fans there against a side that's just finished 11th in League One and the club was together mm. and that's that that was the bit that got me you know it, it, you can you can be in the Premier League you can be any league you can have all the silverware but for me that that moment of the club coming together in a poor season that just touched me and I, and I didn't know where to look I didn't know what to do but I'm glad my boy didn't speak to me I wouldn't have been able to speak I did honestly. I just over. I just overcome with emotion from it. I don't know why, but it just, it just hit me. You got blue side. and white. You got blue and white DNA, Lee. That's why. Well, well, possibly, but as you know, we've had since we've been relegated, and, and it goes back probably further than that. The club's not really been together, and that and that's the bit that's starting to happen, isn't it? You know, the club is coming together. Yes, we're going to be jarred off where we finished, and Hawks made some great points yesterday about you know how he feels and that, but, but I th- yeah, but that just emotion, that, that sense of the, however long it's going to be. And he was saying, you know, Hawks was saying, oh, we've heard all this before and that, but you've got to generally believe it now, haven't you? This, we are in a different, we are in a different, a different um, gravy to what we were before. We have got the investment. They're mm-hmm. going to be relentless in what they do. They're not going to give up. And Matt, the point you made earlier, um, before I come on about, we've not seen nothing to, say we'll be different next year. Well, Kieran McKenna has come in and we're a different team under him, completely different team under him. And I still think that even we're pretty much the same squad, and you mentioned it yesterday, Martin, pretty much the same squad as last as this season, just gone, with 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 McKenna, we will we would I think we'd make top six. And, I agree. You know, and I, I, but you know, it's got with we've, we've got a strength and stuff. And going back to Norwood, and you know, I, I agreed with everything Hock said, but and it, and you can't lie about the facts. He quoted the facts about Norwood, but he left some he left some facts off, didn't he? You know, he left off the fact that he scores a goal every other game. And you know, and I've been thinking about that, and, and I think uh, Martin, you say what is it? Availability is is what is availability it? is your best ability. Yeah, because I always switch off there because I don't really. That, 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 that goes in my head a bit. But anyway, and, and on that point, you know, it's not Norwood's fault he's got injured. And it's also not Norwood's fault that the three strikers behind him can't score. That's not his fault. Yes, he needs to be fit. Yes, it's time for him to move on. But you can't lay all the blame to him when he's injured. No. Because there's other strikers that have got to come in and, and score the goals. And since, and since Cook has gone, uh, correct me because I've not looked the figures up because you, you only messaged me... Uh, an hour or so ago. But I think out of the strikers, since Cook has left the club, Norwood's been our top goal scorer. Since McKenna's been in the club. I think, was he scored six, five, six? Yeah, two or three assists. Mm, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 
so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Macaulay Bond, and I'm not going to, I don't want to slate Macaulay Bond, and I'm not slating him, but use him as an example. He's been fit all season. How many goals has he scored since McKenna's been in? Yeah, one. One. Is that Norwood's fault? It's no. not Norwood's fault, is it? It's not Norwood's fault. So, you know, there's there's a lot to be said there. So I just wanted to, on that point, just bring a bit of balance to it. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I just think, you know, again, he, he's Marmite. And I think the reason is because of social media. Football's yeah. changed now and it's Absolutely. and players are more open um, to to scrutiny from from fans. And, and a lot of that is down to how you go on social media. You know, and I agree. whether it never bothered me because he was our shit house in our club and we needed it. And there people sound like Crunch is calling him, you know, um non league mentality. Well absolutely we need some non league mentality. We need some people on the pitch that are gonna take us forward because we never had that. We went down from league league uh, from the championship of a whimper. We had mm. no one to stick that foot in. We need nasty players, well nasty or whatever, you know, we needed yeah. that. Yeah. And and I think to you know to call him out as as um, non you know non league mentality, I I think that's just disrespectful to him. And, and I think he spoke really well when he came on here. And I, yeah, and I think that 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 yeah. showed. And you know and, and I thought I could see that in him. You know that day I said it before. I think I said it before in the pre game show when I was with on with Crunchy on on Saturday when he got injured in that game where he came back too early where where Lambert wanted him back. He had to come back early because there's no other striker who could score a goal every second, every other game. So he oh, came yeah. back early and got injured again. He hadn't been injured in his career already, like long term. So he probably didn't even know how to manage that injury. And he came back. And when he fell that day, you could see the pain on his face and the anguish that and that he wanted to succeed and do well. So I'd call anybody out that 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 would go against his attitude and stuff because I don't think that's 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 true. So, and that's exactly why I wanted, you know, you because you messaged me after yesterday's show, so I wanted you to have the opportunity to put that forward because I'm all about balance on this platform and all about hearing all sides of the of, of the spectrum and hearing, you know, what Hawks had to say because many people at home will feel the way Hawks felt uh, and many will be sitting at home tonight, tomorrow, whenever they catch this show, and be agreeing with with with, with what you say, Lee. But but the, the underlying fact is he has gone. Hawks said yesterday. It would. People have said it would. It, it would take three million pounds to replace a player like James Norwood. You're obviously a fan of Norwood. How do you go about replacing a player you obviously yeah. you obviously rate? I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sure if Hawks was referring to my tweet. I, I just said that take a good bit of money. Now, I'm not sure if we mentioned three million in the pre-game show, so I'm not sure if that's where it came from from me. But the way I look at it is with the way the market is, and why I say three million, and when you want to replace someone. You need to you need a proper upgrade, didn't you? You need someone that's going to upgrade what you've already got, and we've talked. I've talked about it on the show before with uh, with replacing strikers. So it might take a, a, a good bit of money, or you're going to take a gamble. Now, in the predicament that the, the club is with the money that we've got, the investment, do we take a gamble on on a striker similar to you know that's come through the ranks, maybe like Norwood, uh, maybe you know, are we are, are we going to need somebody who's proven, if there's somebody who's proven in the championship, it's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you a considerable sum of money to bring that player from the championship into League One. So it's not that type of player. It's going to be somebody that has been scouted and has a bit of potential. So that's going to be a bit cheaper. So so that's the sort of, you know, which market are you going to go with? Are you going to get someone that's going to come? We don't want a journeyman. We, I don't think we want some, I don't think there's a strike. I don't know if there is strikers available on a free a free transfer or not. But this type of striker I think that we need is someone who plays like Ivan Tony did when he played for Peterborough. Because I remember and I'm not saying it's got to be Ivan Tony before people jump on me, but he came with a bit of a risk. <laughs> he came with a bit of a risk. He, he was a bit unknown, wasn't he? But, you know <laughs> from the after, wouldn't they? Yeah. From the Emirates to playing at Highbury next year, Ivan Tony. That that's an athletic story all over it. If yeah, yeah, but I don't mean I don't mean <laughs> Ivan Tony. But that I what don't I mean don't. is pace, power. Yeah, good in the air. But but but, but that, so, I mean you're right, Lee. But Matt, that isn't necessarily replacing James Norwood. That's just bringing in a player you need to bring in, whether you've got Norwood on the books or not, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you said it the other week, didn't you? Just see who Peterborough are looking to sign. 
<laughs> exactly. Yes. They're I don't, my scouting network. I don't think the I don't think fees are, you know, what people think they are. Look, we signed Walton for a hundred grand out of a Premier League side. Rumor has it we got Morsey for less than a quarter of a million. So they may maybe we just you know we we're still in this mindset of post pre pandemic that fees are, are huge. I just looked at Cole Stockton for example at Morecambe. He's commanding a fee on transfer market at 135 grand. He's got 20 plus goals this season. So it might not cost as much as you think. But if you if you are shopping in the market that the cruncher is, it wants to go to, like Vyman at Bristol City, where he's got 20 plus goals, and almost certainly you're looking at a couple of mil there, I would have thought. But yeah. I think anywhere else, I don't think the fees would be as significant as what people think they might be. Mm -hmm. But it's a gamble. But you know, oh. but we're not gonna buy Cole St Stockton, are we? He's not what we need. We no. need hybrids. We need three. We've got four strikers. We need three. We're going to play one up top. We don't need four strikers on the books. No, we need strikers that are the same. Two or at least two that are the same. Because when someone gets injured, you want to bring the other one in to do the same. You want to play the same way. So you need someone. I mean, Ivan Tony. I mean, I went to the Peterborough game, that, that 2 2 game. Yeah. And I wonder who the hell he was. You know, you could see from the first minute how good he was yeah. when he started running in behind our back, our back four, whatever it was. He just looked he looked different gravy from, from that from that game. He was exceptional would, that day. Would, and, um, and he, 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 I would look he made you you're right, Lee. He failed the grade of Newcastle and go went there. But wouldn't like Stockton be your identikit replacement to Norwood? Bit of a bruiser, twenty goals this season. Remember him waltzing through against us on the opening day of the season? Yeah, but he walked through, didn't he? He didn't have any pace. Yeah. I mean, how he got through that I mean we said it on here, didn't we? How he what how he wandered through and scored that goal. <laughs> I mean, he didn't. It wasn't very quick, was he? I mean, it took him a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. To, and, and that's not being disrespectful to him, but he's not got pace. And I think McKenna likes pace. And if we're going to play the way we're still, if we're going to play the way we're playing, you need that pace to stretch the back four or five or three, so you can allow the space for your for your, your number tens to pick that space. If you're if you've got a slow striker on the pitch, the back three five will just push up, condense mm. all the play. Mm. And you're not going to get in behind. So you've got to have, you know, the, the defence have got, you've got to be pushing them back 10, 15 yards so you can get your number 10s to play. A bit like yesterday, I mean, Saturday. I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, Selena and um, Chapman in the pockets, they were picking the ball up for, mm. for free, weren't they? They were, nice. no one was near them. Yeah. They didn't know where to, the back three come out and get them. The midfield got them, they were arguing, yeah. you know. So, so yeah, so I, I think two strikers, and it's got to be, Pace, power, and good in the air. Okay. And, and they cost money. But yeah, they absolutely do, yeah. It, we've, we, we said on Twitter this week, is the answer already in the club? No. If you watch the Joe Piggott highlight reel, he's got all those things, but no. is he not no. going to get another chance late, do you think? I don't know with Joe. I mean, I I thought it was at the start when I, I watched the friendlies and I came on here, I think, of one of the games, and I said he was an upgrade on what we had before. But then... Hmm. You know, it wasn't a great upgrade in terms of who he was coming in to replace. Yeah. But I thought he was okay, but he's just the ball's just bouncing off him. It's not not worked for him, has it? But he's our player. Yeah. He's our player, so he might yeah. be the third string. You know, I think he will be. But, I just don't think the club, from a PR standpoint, can can sort of p position him Matt, as no, this is right. this is your <laughs> yeah. striker for next season because yeah. that is going to fall flat on its ass yeah, yeah, he's, even picked the ball. he's got to be yeah you're totally right he's got to be kind of like and now he's found his form he's yeah. suddenly it's a bit of a surprise isn't it? by the way I watched Salford Mansfield earlier 2-2 two -two. Ollie Hawkins was playing in centre half there you go it says it all <laughs> but I said I said the other week for, for me Joe Piggott just needs I, I would if I was the manager it'd be an arm around the shoulder I know what you can do I've seen yeah. what you can do you know through your career mm. all I want from you next year is to enjoy your football and score me eight goals that's all I need from you Joe if you do more than that because you're better than that perfect but that's all I need from you to enjoy your football and get me eight goals next year because from a third striker's point of view eight goals yeah. It's gonna. It would be a hell of a contribution. We've got yeah, uh, Ronnie, who's the most positive he's been in the past five to six years going into pre-season. I feel like the whole vibe around the club has completely altered. Genuinely believe next season will be a good one. Uh, Stephen Parry, Bond and Pickett had their share. 
Uh, Norman Greenwell says it'd be interesting to see how fans reflect on Norwood leaving when our new struggles are in the door. Uh, Owen, I liked his effort 100%, but we need more class. A young Daryl Murphy would be ideal. Uh, that is the needle in the haystack, I, I feel. Lee, you're a realistic man. What, who, who's that man who fires 25 goals minimum? Don't expect an answer to rush straight away. Think on that one, Lee. Who's the man that you feel would, would be the, well, you the don't 25? Think we need that. You don't think we need that player, though, Martin? I don't. I, I don't. And I'll probably go through the summer and I'll outlay that a little bit a little bit more as we go through. I mean, Chapman could do a job up front if it if needs Please. be. Yeah. Doncaster on tour. Welcome into the chat. I hope you're well. Uh, ben Hobbs. Carl Edwards Burns back up. I think not sure about him on the left. And Ben Motre man. Anyone see Cook's post-match earlier threw his team under the yes. bus again. <laughs> he also <laughs> adds, uh, I like, I don't agree with you, Lee, but elegantly put as always that was earlier uh, in the chat Lee, before i let you go i want to reflect just sort of circle back to something you started started off with which i think is important as we go into a summer and it's that that emotion you were feeling at the end of the game because mm. of the togetherness and the vibe that ronnie just said in his comment in the chat there mm. it does feel different as i've said for the last couple of weeks going into pre-season it um, I've never, I don't think I've ever had a feeling like this. I, I, it's hard to put into words what it actually is. Maybe you can do a better job than I, because it is a togetherness. It is a better vibe. I just don't understand it. I've never, I've never experienced it before as a town fan. It's, it's strange to me. I think it's, I think it's just a bit of everything. I, I, I just think, you know, we've, we've won the community award, haven't we? The, the owners are more transparent. They're on, they show passion. You know, and that and that will take owners a, a long way. That that will give you give you more credit in the bank. I mean, we've got a we've got a CEO that knows what he's doing. Yeah, will he get everything right? Of course, they won't get everything right. But I tell you what, he hasn't got a lot wrong with 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 McKenna. They didn't point Paul Cook. I mean, I mean, the only thing they you know they did say was you know maybe sacked him earlier. And and I and I say again, I was all for Cook stay. And I, you know, you've got to build a club. You've got to have that. You've mm. you've got to give that momentum because, again, now McKenna's now got to go out and get his players. Yeah. At some point, you've got to take stock of what you've got and say, right, we've got to go with what we've got and we've we've got to build slowly. You can't. The ownership just can't. Will not keep throwing money at League One. We we can't be spending our budget trying to get out of League One. We need <laughs> yeah. that money when we get into Championship. Yeah. We can't be getting rid of that now. So. So really, it's you know, there's that, and I think the fans, and I think because the ownership's been more open, the atmosphere at the ground, you know, um, section six and all that, it's all it's all coming together. You can see that building at the club, and yes, we finished eleventh, but we're still going. I mean, had that been, I mean, we're sitting here, Lord and probably six players. How good the season they've had. It's our worst position for fifty something years. Since nineteen, whatever it was, and, and we're still saying, "Oh, Burns is great. He's had a great season. We mm. love Morsey. We've got a back like 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 you was talking about yesterday. We've got a back three or a back. You know, we've got we've got a wealth of centre backs that are great. But the start of the season, they were all bloody poor because because mm. of Kam because of Kamikaze Cooks tactics, and we were getting <laughs> absolutely battered, yeah. battered yeah. on the counter attack. Mm. Mm. And it's changed under McKenna. We conceded the less goals. On the yeah. McKenna since he's been Just have scored in that now. balance, and let's get yeah. that balance. So I think yeah, yeah. the club, so that emotion at the that that just hit me. I didn't think anything of it. It just welled me when they started singing, or when we started, you know, the finest football team, Ipswich Town. That just caught me, and it was the atmosphere that caught me, and the fact that God, when we get this right, and we and we win something, and when we beat them, scum up the road, when we do beat them. I tell you what, there's going to be mayhem because it's coming. They don't realise it's coming. It, 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 it is going to come and it, and it might take a bit of time, as we know. But I just felt that, for me, was how I, I would think. Love to hear it. That, it's great yeah, stuff, Blake. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. And just before I, I, just, go and just before I go, can I just say one thing about last night? You said um, take the highlight of last night's show, you know, the one yes, with Boris do. and Zondervan. My biggest highlight was right at the very end when those two turned around to each other and said they hadn't spoken for years. <laughs> yeah. and this platform had brought yeah. them two together. Yeah, yeah. Talking yeah. town. That's all. <laughs> yeah. what, what, I what can I agree. Say? That was my, that, that that was my, my highlight moment. as well. That was that my was highlight. My moment. 
So, I agree. I agree. What a moment that was, though, Lee, just to hear that and feel that oh, sort of that guys, love yeah. again. They rekindled that 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 that, that love, yeah. you know, as yeah. teammates just, for each other. Yeah, the, the, this platform has brought people like that back together. In terms, oh, you know, they're not best, you know, they're not. But they, but they said, didn't they? Oh, we're gonna, you know, oh, we'll be in touch. We'll give you a call. Got numbers. Would that call? Yeah. Would that call ever happen without you guys getting them both from the show? Probably not, would it? Probably and that's not. that's that's the thing for me, and that's what's been great about the platform. It's all regardless down to of whether, regardless <laughs> of whether we all agree. With Lee, we there. love you. We appreciate you. Hopefully, yeah, you'll come it. on more next year, particularly yeah, on the show, because you're, yeah. you're gold. Care, you're gold. We love Feel you. See you later, Matt. See you later, Cheers, mate. All the best. After yourself. I, I love the way. Great. He ended there, but particularly the emotion he yeah. was feeling in the, yeah. in the full time. And you could see it when he came onto the post game show for all the 30 seconds. But is it just simply down to the love? And uh, it feels like we're all in, we're all in, in this together on this journey. Yeah, most, yeah, most probably. I mean, something Colin said to me once kind of resonates a little bit. He always says, you know, I love this club like I love, love my family. And the two like goes hand in hand for so many people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, my missus will, will think. Me supporting Ipswich is like just like crazy, just like likewise every, every waking hour, it's 365, 24 7, like everyone else who tunes into this. You know, it's not just exclusive to me. And then you meet other people who are like that. And then, you know, and, the, and, you, and you just see the, the momentum of that. And like Colin said, I love this club yeah. like my family. And I was like, yeah, so do I. Yeah. You know, likewise. that's what it means to us. And we've, you know, we've been, I always remember um, a, a player coming to Wembley and we, he asked me who I supported. And I said it was Ipswich. I can't remember who the play was, Clark Hollow, maybe. And he said, That is a Clark. That's a sleeping giant, he said to me. In all seriousness. He said, You've mm. been treading water for years. He said, You've had Ralph Rams, you've had Bobby Robson, you've had European trophy. And I was like, Yeah, you're, you're so right. It's just like the, the frustration that everyone's had over the years of like doing nothing, you know, since we got relegated at Anfield and then just treading water, like, Clark, you know, like he said. For all those yeah. years, and now it does it does feel like something's happening. But I'll go back to the point I said at the top of the show. I need to see a little bit more to, to get me on board because at the moment we still got the same squad. Once yeah. we see someone like you say signings coming on, where 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 are we heading to? But there's lots of clubs saying exactly the same thing. Derby will say it, Barnsley will say it, Peterborough will say it, Plymouth will be saying it. Whoever comes out of the playoffs will be saying it. I am I am the same as you. I am in show. I am in show me. Don't tell me. I have been for the last couple of years but but this time it just feels different primarily i i, I would say because bef under a previous regime it always felt an us versus them situation yeah, yeah, yeah. it was never all it was it was never ours it was always us versus them and the huge divide which which got bigger and bigger and was almost untenable by by the end. Let's let, let's let's be honest. Uh yeah. and I, 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 I agree with that. And I always remember you know when I went to see Ipswich Watford at Vicarage Road and we was like, it's part of the FA it was in the director's box and I met Marcus Evans and Clegg. And I was like, these ain't like sheep shanks. I remember thinking to myself, you know, like, I remember Clegg going, oh yeah, lead better, Matt, he's our kingmaker. And I was like, mm, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And whereas this ownership obviously been on this platform, yeah. uh, they're much more open and they've done such a tremendous job yeah. in the last 12 months yeah, of yeah. making it an us thing and always putting their yeah. the proverbial arms around the fan base and bringing it closer instead of pushing it away. I had cultivated what you're hearing, like Lee talking about now. I mean, some of that is PR as well. Let's not get too caught up. A yeah, little but we bit. didn't have that before. Oh, we didn't have that before. No, and it's I the little agree. things like Saturday when players are going off. Yeah. Mark Ashton's out of his seat clapping. No, not yeah. like a, a normal prawn cocktail brigade where they're sat on their seat clapping. He's off his yeah. feet. It's, it's, yeah, well, yeah. He I mean, cares and wants it as, just as badly as Lee Anderson sat in that upper north. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Rich said quite rightly, didn't he, on the, the show, was it the Sheffield United game when Keane was too embarrassed to come out and it was like literally 150, 200 people in the stadium. I remember being in there like, it was like depressing. They went round and it was like a, you know, like someone mm. glances one to third man in the cricket. On a Tuesday morning, his little little ripple. <laughs> it was like that, you know. It was that said. Yeah. If Mark Ashton does not deliver me, De Giovanni De Santos, I will be having words. Well, this well, is Mark not your PR extension. Right, extension. <laughs> yeah, would, would you he's only thirty. Now? He's only thirty. Get him in. <laughs> I saw Luke Wolfenden was on the uh, recruitment trail yesterday on Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah, can't beat sunny stuff at Bar. That's what he said. 
Um, Owen, great point to leave. Fabulous platform, TT. It's brought me closer yeah. to Ipswich's fan base living in Leeds and has eluded me previously. Obviously, yeah. Leighton Durrant come down from Leeds on Saturday and, and be with us for the pre-game show, which was great. Uh, safety guy, people do disagree on issues on the platform, but we all have ITFC at heart. We absolutely do. And disagreements always forge agreements in the end. Well, it, you know, we talk about transparency of ownership. You do certainly get transparency of opinions on here, don't you? I mean, you've we've all clashed with each other. You and Richard have had a big row on there. Yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah, but we've always said, you know, talking down is a little bit like you're down the pub with your mates and we're around the table and we're chatting and you will fall out and, you know, you, you will get Lee coming in and talking about how emotional he felt. It's the whole gambit of it's a roller coaster of emotion, isn't it? Funnily enough, that row you just mentioned there was me defending people's right to have an opinion. It wasn't anything I'd said or he was upset about what I'd said. I was simply defending. And I will yeah. do to, you know, for, until I have no more breath in my lungs. It's, it's, that's what it's about, this platform, defending the right to come on and say, I think Bursa Selena sh should be, you know, not brought back. I think Joe Pickett's not good enough. I think Sam Morsey's not, uh, what was it Jordan originally said about Sam Morsey? He's Cole Skews with an armband, Callie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even bring me on that. Oh, How you doing, Lord? Are you the exclusive shirt behind you? Now, what number is that then? Uh, wait, what, what number do you think? Oh, I'm going to say 55, right? <laughs> You'd be yeah, correct. I'm right. You'd There's be a correct. The elephant in the room, then, Callie. Over the weekend, town played Charlton, but something else happened after the town dominated Charlton. What, just for those that perhaps don't follow you on social media or haven't heard, what, you went to dinner, didn't you? Was with, with somebody? <laughs> what, what, what was this? Yeah, me, me and Sam had some food after, um, yeah. as grand as he's called it, after. Where did you go? Oh, I don't know, somewhere in the country, somewhere. It's all country oh, okay. to me. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. Rural. It was just, Rural yeah, it was just country. I went over, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just all country. Who paid? I did. No, I'm joking. Who do you think paid? Well, he, I was going to say, he, he probably paid with his gold bonus. But he missed the opportunity, Callie. He's still got gold bonus. He's all right. He so he missed like the opportunity. He was a bit wounded about that, but it is what it is. It's um, It was a good game. It was a good game. I think Lee made a, a spot on point there about like we're all together. And I think yep. so like one of the things that was mentioned or was talking after the game was, you know, <laughs> we can't believe how happy like the fans are that we finished 11th. Like, I don't know, um, you guys didn't go to the, did you go? No, Crunch was there, but they play uh, the award thing after in the yeah. fan zone. Yeah. And every, everyone got on. And then um, and then it, they asked Sam a question when he got his thing or whatever. And it was just like, you know, how's it gone? And he was honest. He was like, well, it's okay. It's like, because we ain't got promoted, right? So, mm. you know, it's okay. But he goes, you know, just believe in that, like, the fan, ev everyone you speak to connected with that club, playing and non-playing stuff will tell you, the support has been amazing. And the fact that we've had like half a million ticket sales come through Portman Road in league games this year says wow. it all, yeah. right? Yeah. Half a million tickets, not not in terms of pounds, just a, a 500 yeah, yeah. yeah, in terms of numbers, right? So that tells you about a mid-tier League One team. We had the 7K, MK, we had 1,100, 1,200 at crew for a dead rubber. We had all these fans mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Suffolk's a bitch to travel from. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> with the away games, the away games are kind to me. Yeah. But but like for everyone else, it's madness. But yeah. what I was trying to explain is for so long, and especially under this Evans era, we've been kind of starved of any kind of whether it's nice football. Like I can't remember the last time we played football like this. Maybe Joe Royal, mm. maybe George Birdie, right? Yeah, yeah. Certainly, yeah, certainly yeah. Birdie, but maybe Royal was probably the last person I remember. We were actually playing it in triangles, creating spaces, scoring great goals. We've got contenders for goals of the season more than just one or two goals, right? As an example, yeah. right? So it is, it is pretty good. And you're like, okay, this is good. And, it, and I was just trying to explain, it's like to a starving man, the most deadest meal, like a, a Mackey's that has been sitting there for three days in the fridge or whatever with some dead ass fries and dry as fuck, right? That looks appealing. Now, I'm not saying that it's been a, a, a three day old Mackey's type of performance, <laughs> but it is, it is one of those where... In, in parts, we have played well, and certainly under McKenna. Yeah. And I think, Martin, you made the point the other, the other day yesterday when you said um, about under McKenna with this same group of players, if he'd have been here at the beginning, we probably would have made top six. And I agree with yeah. that, right? And I, I genuinely think we're, we're a handful of signings away from 
we don't need to do this overhaul. Like it's just gonna unsettle things as well. Mm. Um, we do need to make sure we tie down, you know, and we have to wait off interest and all the rest of it and tie the best players down to long term deals and stuff like that. Like, and then you know, Wes Burns had a phenomenal season. We need to make sure we can get the same thing, and I'm pretty sure he will. There's nothing there that strikes me as Wes Burns is a one season wonder, right? Mm. You, you can see that he looks the real deal. And I think the reason he probably hasn't, he's gone a bit below the radar before he comes to Ipswich is because with respect, he'd been at teams like Fleetwood who, mm. who weren't playing the same attacking football or to his strengths. Yeah. Look at him, he takes players on. We've been crying out for a player like that. And rightly so, he's, he's sweeped up all the awards, right? He probably has been one of our best players, if not the best player this season, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then obviously, yeah, I'm going to be biased, but everyone will tell you the same. You know, Sam's been immense in the midfield. We do miss him when he's not there. Um, and then we've got obviously someone to play alongside him is what I think we need. Evans is good, but I'll bring you to the point you make about Norwood, which it was was before about you know availability, right? And Evans does not just here; he's had a few niggles and stuff like that. No. Um, he's a great player, you know, no denying that. But can you rely on him to be there? You know, the reality is, if Evans was fit, would we've even signed Backinson on loan? Probably not. No, right. No, so no, that no. forced us into the thing no. where no. all of a sudden fans are like. Well, we'd sign up Backinson or whatever, but we do need. I, I rate Backinson, and I'd personally have Backinson and Harper as a as a um, deputy for someone like Sam, and we need someone else with him. You know, how do you, I'll ask you the same question, Matt, after Callie's answered it? Mm-hmm. But how do you yeah. see, or what do you see, Sam Morsey's role, best role being next year? Do you see it as that box to box role he's been playing since McKenna came in, or, or or do you see actually the best? Uh, the best we can get out of Sam is the holder to do the I'll call it the grunt work, the dirty work you know, the heavy lifting to allow a player we bring in uh, like, like a Brannigan for example or whoever uh, to go forward and, and get those goals how how do you see us getting the best out of Sam Morsi next year, Cali? I think what he's doing now you get the right player with him that can sit a bit more, I think you need to give Sam a bit more freedom because he is a box-to-box midfielder Mm-hmm. Um, that that's where his strengths are, and I honestly, and you can clip this up, you know, if he's here next season and we've got him and we and um, we got the right player next to him, he'll get between ten and fifteen goals, right? And and, and you can bank on that. And if not, I'll put fifty quid to a charity of your choice. There you go. Which I might, have to, borrow, I might have to borrow that from Sam. So that's that's <laughs> Cali putting put, put <laughs> putting the opinion on the line, Matt. I said ten to fifteen. Remember, and I, I didn't just say lead goals. I said goals. Don't worry. Well, kebab cook counts. Don't worry. Your predictions for finishing fourth and fifth are notoriously wrong. And Matt is equally uh, not yeah, good at, at, at predicting return of investment on players and, and goals. But Matt, are you with Cali? Do you see do you see Morsi's best role being that that, that box to box? Or do you think you need yeah. somebody else who's gonna be a more natural goal scorer and allow Morsi hmm. just to be Sam freaking Morsi? But it, but it can do both roles, can't he? Like, I don't think it was any, you can. I don't think it was any like accident that you know on that debut we had against Doncaster, Evans scored the hat trick. Mm. But how do you? I, I'm pretty certain Evans. It's Evans and Morsey. I would have thought would be you know your, your your two mainstays in that midfield. So, but I remember when Barry came from Wigan came on the show, he said Evans was kind of like a quarterback. So maybe he goes deep and he's firing the ball, you know, long if you need to. Going short to Morsey. I think Morsey's been really good in that box to box role, albeit not with great pace, Cali. But, you know, he, he, he reads the game great. Mm-hmm. He rarely gives the ball away. He can make a pass. Mm-hmm. And he does seem to spring up like against Charlton on Saturday, where he just he, he just missed the target. But yeah, I agree. I think that's a really good role of his. But I think it suits us that he can he can do both. So he can, you know, he can sit if he needs to, or he can mm-hmm. be bet- bet- between the boxes. Uh, YouTube member Ipswich Jules is obviously he, he's learning how you interpret contributors on Talking Town because he says, I'm worrying that Callie is saying if Sam is here <laughs> next season. No, look, let me okay. Obviously, people are under contract, but football's football. I've not been told anything to suggest anything otherwise, right? And I don't ask, I don't pray, then that's not my thing. You get it, mm. but equally, football is football. We, you know, I, I bet people didn't think that Selena. No, fuck off. Move that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Move that up. <laughs> I know someone. I know someone. Anyway, there's transfers, there's stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But the, the reality is, yeah, he's a contracted player. But if a championship club comes in, and we know Mark Ashton is about developing 
and as he calls it, player trading. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. right. You know, if he can, if if a championship club comes in and they're willing to offer Sam say like three or four year deal, which you know towards the end of the career, you want it there and all the rest of it. You know, if we've he's only got two year deal here, same sort of thing we could have had with Norwood. Norwood we could have probably offered a year deal mm. as fair choice, but reality is he probably wants two years or something like that. So you just got you just got to make sure that whenever you know whatever happens in football, I can't say when he's here because then on the flip side, if I say yeah, when Sam's is here next year, and then he he gets sold or whatever, then you know it's like on Twitter or something like that. Someone's like, oh, you said this, blah blah blah, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. So yeah, yeah don't uh, I am not I'm not trying to float no in the no or whatever it is. I'm not trying to do none of that. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know what I, I, I know what I know, and that's it. it I know what I know and I know what I don't know. We saw it on the yeah. show last night, Romeo, didn't we? He gave up the chance of playing in the Premier League with town to go back to yeah. Holland because they gave him a better longer longer term deal. That's yeah. the thing. So, Adam Elvin with a yeah. great with 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 a question, I'll I'll put Matt. You can you can answer this one first. As disappointing as the season was, I'd rather mm. be in League One this season under the American owners with Ashton at the will than in the Championship under Evans. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I'm just wondering what you how you'd answer that because I know you was all in on the Championship, weren't you? Um, well, yeah, because that... I, I don't want to blow the budget we've got in League One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missing yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I want to get to the Championship as quick as I can, and then literally. Throw a load of money at the wall that isn't my money, uh, it wasn't my pension, yeah. and get promotion. Yeah, I do get the thinking that Adam's there. So you're, you're, what Adam's basically saying is that you go step back to go too forward, aren't you? Which is so, really right. Yeah, but I, 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 st I still can't get over the fact that I feel like it was a missed opportunity this season. I really do. Yeah, I say did. that on the fact that Plymouth have missed out on on playoffs with about 80 points. But, I mean, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? It's I hope it's not like that really next really season. Really. Will it? <laughs> if, if football is a game of snakes and ladders, we we sadly hit a snake this year, didn't we? And we, we, yeah, we yeah. instead of going up the ladder, what we all thought we were going yeah. to be, we we ended up well, we're back to back to square one in the end. Um, yeah, yeah, the exact, yeah, exact same points. Uh, everyone's got a price, says Stephen. Uh, I'm going to bring Stephen Parry in. Stephen, welcome in, my man. How you doing? Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Uh, one of my highlights of the year, Stephen, has to be. <laughs> The Christian Walton transfer oh. show with me and you. Um, <laughs> tell me about, talk to me about just, just how good Christian Walton has been because it was very unlucky, I suppose, not to be, you know, player of, a player of the year or, or closer to winning player of the year. The, right? To me, th this is what annoys me. Yeah. It's because he should be player of the year. Yeah. Because let's be fair, who got player of the year? Was it Bazunu? He plays for Man City, for God's sake. Come on, let's get a grip. You know, you got Bailey Peacock Fowley, play for Burnley. You know, they're not going to be there next season. You know, so he's the best contracted goalkeeper in this league. Mm, yeah. Mm, right, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I think the only people who should be in player of the year are contracted players. You shouldn't have loan players in player of the year because that's no, just that's like Premier true. League. That's, that's a play Premier League clubs blowing smoke up their young players' ass. We know exactly what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man City can add an extra £200,000 on his transfer fee or yeah. whatever because yeah. he's got player of the year in League One that he didn't do anything with Man City for. He's, he's a good goalkeeper. I'm not denying that. He weren't against us at Fratton Park, was he? Well, no, he wasn't. <laughs> at that, no. you know, just how good, fair, good he did have a good. Yeah, good well, he's been excellent. Seriously, he's been excellent. You've got to put into in, into account that the defense has been excellent in front of him. It's not just him. He's not a brick wall. You know, the defense has you know covered his ass and he's covered yeah. their ass when there's been mistakes. So they've worked as a unit, and that's what we've needed for a very long time. A defense that's worked as a unit. You know, right. and we've had Elkin coming in, who I think will probably get a loan next season. We've got Corey coming back next season, who I think will be excellent as a as backup for the left hand right. side because we're Shout really out. sure. We're really Shout sure. Out he right. just won player of the year yeah. at uh, Salford. Oh, exactly. and, you know, he yeah. could he could play he could play, he could be backup for left left centre back. He could be backup for left wing back because he played both those positions at Salford. So, you know, we've got options now. You know, at the moment we've got like six or seven options for defence. You know, I'm thinking like, well, you know, that's if you include uh, KVY on the right hand side. You know, we've got, or Edward, sorry, on the right hand side. We've got like six or seven options for defence. And I think that's a brilliant base to start from. That's you know? great. And I think that's where we have to look at it. And we have to look at the season, it, not in, you know, we have to look at it in a whole, of course. It, 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 we, we did fail. We know the reasons why we failed. That's, what, that's why, why I put what I said last night. And Crunch said I was being a bit, you know, 
It's not easy. I, said, I never said it was easy. I says it's easier because we know what our problems are. You know, we've, we, we, we've got, we've like conceived the th third lowest goals and it's like the 11th least scorers, you know. So we know where our problems are. We know if we can cut out the sloppiness in the last 10 minutes, if we can improve set pieces a bit, and get a yeah. regular goal scorer. If we could just, if we could that's get all our problems sorted. Yeah, but that's all yeah. our problems sorted. They are our problems. Now you're going to get a lot of clubs coming up, coming down, thinking they know what their problems are, and then trying to fix their problems, and then find out they've got other problems. You know, because Derby's coming down like the big, big I am. You know, I've, I've been on their Twitter. They're coming down like the big I am. Yeah, they've got a shock. You know, <laughs> yeah. they've got a lot of youngsters who were at this moment in time, this season. They already knew they were probably going down, so they were playing with passion. They were playing with emotion. Next mm -hmm. season, they're getting kicked to the kicked to seven seven hills. That'll be a massive culture shock for them, and mm -hmm. I think they will struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I think they're going to come down like we did, like Billy Big Bollocks. Yeah, they're yeah? mm -hmm. going to have a shock, mm -hmm. and they'll think, "Shit, this isn't what we this isn't what we were told it was." You know, <laughs> but rocking up rocking up to Accrington on a, on a rainy yeah. rainy Tuesday night and getting the, getting that living kick, living crap kicked out. You with crap mm. referees. May I, may, may I ask you, you Stephen? You, you know, you say you know what 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 we need to do. So in that case, if players like Selena, players like Macaulay Bond, the players that aren't under contract in those attacking mm. areas, do you bring them back? Do you say, look, we love you for what you've done this year and previous years? But it's not worked. It, it isn't going to work moving forward. You're not the right fix at the right time. Because you're right. We can't. We can't score goals. So I get what you're saying. It's a difficult one because these none of these are Kieran McKenna's players. No. Yeah. Now I can. And they've can failed, haven't they? They've failed. Well, to an, to an extent, I, I'll, I'll give Selena a bit of a pass. Yeah, because it, it, he's he's had it harder than what's what what, what uh, Chaplin's had it on the other side or Luke had it on the other side because we had a very weak left. You know. Chaplin had a very easy pass to Burns when he was doing the overlap. Selena didn't have that. He had to look inside. That's why he looked inside for, for Backington on Saturday, because there was nobody going out on the, on the left-hand side. I think if we had a better left wing back, his numbers might have been better. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. there was nobody ever there when he had the ball, so he had to look somewhere else to try and find a pass. So he either dinked it over and the striker didn't make a run, or he tried to play it across and then... Chaplin ended up ended up getting it and passing it on to Bond, uh, passing it on to Burns. You know, so it, it, I think he had, he, he's had a tough he's had, he's had a tough run. If we can get another, I'd think I'd say at best it's probably another loan deal. I don't think we'll buy him. I think at best we'd offer him another loan deal. If we can do that, yes, Bond is probably I'd say he'd go back. Go on. And I think we'll get him two new strikers. Good evening, Mrs. Perry. I hope you're well. Um... <laughs> Just annoying me, cat now. Matt, do you agree with that? I know you've you've been very critical of of, of big game Bursan. State Stephen says he with a better left wing back, his numbers would be better, and and he's he's worth running back as as a loan option. How, how do you what do you think about big game Bursan? I don't know. I don't know. I still well, I agree with what Glenn Curtis is saying here. All teams are saying if we can fix this, everyone's yeah. saying that. But then Lewis, this the season is laying the foundation for the promotion push. And then oh, making us sustainable in the championship. Think how much think how think how much the club think how much the club has changed in a year and where we could be next year. Yep. But again, everyone else is saying that as well, isn't it? I, I think it's too early in the, you know, it's too early after the end of the season to be sort of saying that thing. I certainly agree with Stephen about Derby. I mean, bloody hell, they are gonna think they're coming down here and it's gonna hundred points, hundred goals, like we said, and it's a totally different landscape, isn't it? Whether or not they've still got Rooney, I don't know. I would imagine he'll get cherry picked by someone in the championship or maybe higher. I would have thought it's rumored MK uh, Liam Manning's going, isn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But in terms of the you know, in terms of those players, I mean, I think Selena's going to get up. I think if anyone thinks that Ipswich are the only club going to be in for Selena, I think it'd be in for a shot. I, you know, he's played in France and Holland already, and he's played over here. I think there'll be teams in like I've said before, like Germany or across Europe would be looking at him. It yeah, but there was this time, Matt, weren't there? There were teams in Saudi Arabia looking at him and offering him what <laughs> yeah. he were on, and he, 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 did, he didn't want to go there. He decided to come here. He so there is, a, there is a pull here for him if the deal's right. And, he obviously you know, likes it. Yeah. He likes it in this country, yeah. and he likes it here. Yeah. You know, so there is that is a pull. If he's, if you're, so it just shows it's not always about money because he was offered more money in Saudi Arabia, and he said, no, I don't want to go. But we well, have to come with less money. 
if he was to sign permanent. But I mean, look, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll we don't know. You no, know, everyone's going off this twenty-one thousand pound, twenty-one thousand pound a week thing that was in the press. Let's be fair; he's paid in euros for Christ's sake. He's not going to be on twenty-one thousand pounds at Dijon. <laughs> so that's wrong for a start, factually. You know, we don't know what he's on. I'm fed up with these people who say we know what players are on. Clubs don't tell people what people are earning. It's very rare. Like, look at Luton. They don't tell anyone how much players are earning. I don't want to know how much players are earning. It's none of my business how much they earn. I really don't care. I think, I th take the money side out of it. Yeah, I agree with you, really. It's, you know, what did he deliver on the pitch? Because I've said, I've said a thousand times, he was the X factor to get us over the line for top two and we finished 11th. Now, it's not all down to him, is it? But you'd expect someone of Celian's calibre to have chipped him with at least double-figure goals, I would have said. But I think, can I just jump in? Yeah, like, go for it. Right. A couple of things. The preseason is a massive thing for him, right? He didn't have one. No. He come with he come with the heart had the heart issue from COVID. Remember that? So he come yeah. back. So he didn't start again. So getting his fitness up to scratch, and he was chucked straight in. He showed he's, he showed flashes. There's no doubt we can show, show flashes. But I honestly think, yes, you sign him up next year. You give him preseason under McKenna. Hopefully, realistically, to suit all parties involved, maybe a, another loan deal. But I think it's his final year at Dijon, so no, Dijon are going to want to cash it. Or is it two more? Two two years. Years. Okay. Well, so, no, and if it works next time, we'll buy yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, so then there's that option there. But I think, yeah, under McKenna, you will we'll see the player. And if you don't if you don't get Selena, you will notice the difference by mm. him not being there. Because there well, are things say, that run at players. He does, you know, he has got some trickery about him. And... At the beginning of the season, I think it's fair to say he was showing a, that he's a bit lightweight, but it could have been also that he was just getting up to fitness or whatever. But he's scanning the pitch all the time. You know, he, it, intelligence wise, he's one of our best. You know what I mean? You, you um, see him on that. You see him when the camera's on him. He's looking, always looking around. He's looking yeah, for work. Brilliant. You know, and I think to myself, I think Callie's right. I don't think he was fully up to speed till about October. You know, yeah. so that was a good. Three months that he'd missed. Even then, you know, when you've been up to uh, up to speed, then you're just doing your training drill. Yeah, of cardio. You've not got See, your pre Yeah, pre you've not got you're two, three weeks of just running, running, and running. Yeah. You're not doing. Well, I do running. think you're not building the biggest fitness. thing that hindered him more than the likes of Chaplin was the fact that we had a, we had a very weak weak left hand side, and he had a different partner new enough every week, and he couldn't get a partnership going. Chaplin or whoever played on the right knew it was either going to be Burns or mm. KBY. Mm. On the left hand side, he hardly knew who he was playing against because it was virtually a different one every week. You know, so one minute it was Colson, then it was Penny, then it yeah. was Edwards. But I think that left side also was that suffered a lot because there's the, is there isn't that reliability between on that right you got JD and Burns link up and that's a brilliant mm. link up. You don't have that reliability on the left back and let's be real, nice enough guys, the great flashes, but I don't think we have. Matt Penny, nah, he's not a starting, he's a backup. No, at he's a backup, yeah. Right, Dom Thompson, great effort, but he's not ready. Um, K, um, KVY can do left back as well, but probably as a backup. I would, KVY, he did look good towards the end of the season, but I think that's good to have in your squad. Whether that's, you know, again, his injury, he's had a few injuries, so you don't know about, you know, we talk about availability. Maybe just need a left wing back, a centre yeah. mid, right, and then two strikers. And then possibly another wing or something. That's it. We don't need to go all crazy. I, I, I do think you're, you're right, Stephen, because you, you, I, I think what Bursant really needs is somebody who's going to be able to stretch the game, create those pockets of space for him to really move him into. The ball down to cross in. You know yeah, because I mean? obviously pace, pacey players make a back back line retreat, and that that then creates a little bit of space for him to turn. I mean, as Craig at Portsmouth uh, says, I, I keep seeing every day his stats are better than you think. Anyone knows mm. he's run the ball back for our third goal. And yeah, looking at first yeah, exactly stats, according to Sofa Score, six goals, six assists, twelve big chances created, one point eight key passes. Maybe Matt, this is the chicken and the egg. If you had a better striker who could finish his dinner, yeah. first yeah, would really. be. 12 assists, 15 assists, because I mean, yeah. his big chance creation is by far one of the best, if not the I mean, best, at the football club. I think, yeah, I mean, when Rich phoned me on Saturday after the game and he was like, we were talking about Ooh, Twine had scored four goals at Plymouth. So I think he's, his total goal contributions, his assists and passes and goals he scored himself is something like 30 plus. 
mean, I thought Bursant would have been, I was really excited when Bursant signed. I was like, I can't believe it. he's coming back to us. Great. I still remember all the, the world is he was scoring in the championship for us. You could be right. I don't know. It's, it's a real difficult one. I do get the argument of the preseason. Was there an argument that we shouldn't have signed him because of those things? I don't know. Is there someone who's who's had a better season in League One that we could sign? A Brannigan? I think I was I, think, I was, yeah, I, was, I, was worried, I was I was worried yeah. about comparing it to like Twine, you know what I mean? You know, he's a different player, he's a different type of player. And will Twine do this next season? We can all sit here and say games and rest. Yeah, but Joe Piggott what, what, no, no, you know, no, no, let's, let's refer, twine is people go through yeah. purple patches and then suddenly they drop That's not a purple patch, but uh, uh, two seasons oh. is not a purple patch. Twine is a good player. He's young as well, yeah. right? Twine is, twine is a good player. I've seen players have go two to the seasons top. and they've gone woof off a cliff. I've, I've seen know. it before. When they change know. over to another club that's completely different environment and suddenly it drops off a cliff when Swindon, they come like the big I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but Swindon is a different environment to MK Dons, and he's done it at both clubs. As much as I hate it, right? Because I don't, I don't like MK Dons, and I don't want them to go up, right? But he will be in the championship next season, right? I would love it, like Keegan Star, love it, love it if we manage to sign him, right? But the reality is, he's 22, 23. He'll play championship. He could play Premier League. Right? I'm not even saying we'll sign him. I don't think we will. No, I'm, I'm saying, not saying you are. You know, he's he's been, where's he been? He's been at the likes of Swindon Town. He's been at the likes of MK Dons. Yeah. But the simple fact is, when he, he say, say, I don't know, a Newcastle or, but, or, or a Burnley or, I don't know, Fulham came in for him. Yeah. Then he'd be a small fish in a big pond. Sometimes that can change. But yeah. both, at, both at Swindon and at MK, he's a big fish in a big pond. Yeah. Or a big fish in a small pond. When you start, it can talk. That change of dynamic for a player. No, I get that. Can I totally get that. Different. And you don't know what it's going to be like. That's what happened with us with Piggott, I think. Yeah, great. Fish in exactly that. Pond, and then suddenly but, you can't do it. All I'm saying, yeah, I do get that, and you're right. But all I'm just saying on that point is, I think he would take to a championship club the way we've seen Flynn, Flynn Downs. I hope so. I but hope Flynn so. Downs is not the big fish at, Sw at uh, Swindon, at um, Swansea. Swansea. But so you speak to Swansea fans, they rave about him. I hope he does. I think he's got a You know, I have, I have, I have my worries, but you know, that's been probably because I said that Piggott was we Piggott wouldn't have suited our style at the beginning of the last season. But before we are, we are. you both go, Owen Griffiths, question: What date will we see our first signing? Owen's going for May the twenty sixth. Stephen, the frontal window don't open until June, so. What does it, make, uh, you, or does it open early? Tenth of June. Actually, does I, it open early? I think they'll make an announcement before the tenth of June. I think they'll have one and someone someone lined up ready to come in before the tenth of June. It won't be signed till the tenth of June because they're not allowed to. But we'll know about who's coming in before mm. the tenth of June. Mm. I'll say at the end of end of end of May. End of okay. End of May for Stephen. Uh, Stephen, we appreciate you coming on tonight. Look after yourself. Uh, we'll see you very later. soon. As all a sense, Cali. Before I let you go, what about you? What is that ITK say? <laughs> it will have the exact date here and time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I reckon around about the 3rd of June at about 7.58 in right. the evening. Five running, there'll Rob. be a tweet going out from this IP address, 10.4.7. <laughs> no, right. So um, I don't think it's – I think we'll get – we will get some signings, but I think the main signings you're going to see are going to be later in the transfer window. I wouldn't be surprised if our top goal scorer comes after the season started. Okay. Because I we're not again we're not going for. I've seen people mention uh, lower players and all the rest of it, and that's great. But we need to be getting you know championship quality players. And yeah, I think after the season starts, I, I don't like that. That no no. We need to be ready that. to hit the ground running. We need to be ready from. Day one. I don't want no poor start. I, I don't want no excuses. The problem no, is... You didn't get a pre-season bollocks. I want a, a team ready to go July 30th. The, the, fact, the fact of the matter is, right, as an example, who is that quality couple of strikers? People are floating a few unrealistic names. No one's named things saying, oh, this is a profile of a striker that really suits us or whatever. Right? So the, the fact is, there's going to be... Yeah, you know, we can pay his wages for one about half a week. <laughs> Right. Half an hour, fold, and then we fold. <laughs> Half an um, hour, more like. But yeah, then um, you, you I don't know. You, we haven't found the profile of the striker, so then it, it suggests that you know there's there's not enough supply, which we know. 
Mm. Right? And there's other clubs that are going to want the same sort of thing. We're not the same. We're not the only team playing this formation. We're not the only team doing this kind of, you know, it's trickle down from Pep and the upper leagues about pressing, passing, all the rest of it. Everyone's trying it, right? So that same, when you find that striker, those couple of strikers, there's 10 other clubs that want him, yeah. right? I know we can beat 10 other clubs and we have proven it by beating off championship people for like people like Wes Burns and, and other, other players as well. But if we if we're then competing and it's like, okay, there's three strikers, it's going to be a long-term negotiation. It's going to be long, drawn-out negotiation. It's not like, if you're a player, put yourself in a player's shoes, you've got six or seven clubs in, in for you. You're not just going to sign on the dotted line straight away, right? You'd be like, okay, hold on. They want to hear what I've got. They want to hear about this, right? I've got to do this. And it is a long negotiation, right? So, I don't know. I, I think main one come there, yeah, I'd say fairly as soon as the, the transfer window opens, we'll get a signing through the door. Um whether that signing becomes a start or whatever, I don't know. But um, okay. quickly before I go, one thing I just want to say, because um, seeing as Lee was blown smoke up your ass earlier, I might as well do the same thing, about the platform being all wonderful, which it is, right? And I just want to shout out, because season's ended, all the rest of it, right? First season, you've had a, you know, you all, all you guys here as well, I've had a few little idiots on, on, on the line, but you dealt with it how you deal with it, right? Some, obviously, you dealt with in person, right? Um, <laughs> but fact of the matter is, this does bring a lot of people together. So I'll remember the first away game of the season. I went to Burton and I'm outside and I'm about just chilling. Got my ticket, waiting. And it's Lee Brown. And I met him and he's like, yeah, mate, how you doing? I'm Lee Brown. I'm in the comments. I'm like, how are you doing or whatever? I had a chat with him. And, you know, see, for years I've been going to games with like maybe one mate or by myself, just on my Jack Jones or whatever. That's cool. And you get involved with the chanting, but you know at the halftime bits and when you're there and you want to take it in, there ain't no Ipswich fans around me, right? I mean, Coventry, right? Right, so there's no Ipswich fans around me. So hearing it when you're there and then you have the pre... It's a, it's a ritual now, pre-match, link up mm. with Sir Bobby, right? Even if you're not jumping on the show, you link up, say hello to everyone, yeah, Lovely. what we're saying. I always like getting um, Simon's predictions, right? Because nine times out of ten, he gets them right, even though he's always... <laughs> fucking negative sometimes right but he's he's good with his predictions you got yeah, everyone in there right. and it just just feels like yeah but especially for people that are far away you bring all that content there everyone's a knob and with the knob army and crunch has called that out i get that but yeah man don't don't like let anyone ruin what's happened man and let's hope next season we, we, we're celebrating promotion absolutely you know what I mean? Callie, thank we can you hopefully so have someone on here with a winner's medal Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I really honestly Thanks, appreciate Thanks, that. Thanks, mate. Look after yourself. Really honestly, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Um, as we end, rumors that you know Adidas, the kit supplier, maybe Umbro next year. Uh, rumors. Uh, these are the sorts of things now we, that Twitter and social media turns its attention to. Matt, you know, um, would you be against the Umbro kit deal? And if and if so. On the theme of 91, 92, maybe a, a, a you know anniversary red and black or a blue and white or, or a yellow. Yeah, well, yeah, what yeah. do you want? What do you want next year? I always thought like the Umbro brand was dead. I mean, England, they kind of like the Umbro brand kind of finished for a while, didn't it? Because England had Umbro, went over to Nike, and it suddenly came, came, it had like a little reprise, it came back again. I'm not too bothered as long as the kit looks good. I'd like a, I've always said I'd like it to be a little bit more bespoke rather than these template kits you get. So, you know, if we've got this feeling of momentum and this togetherness, then you want something that's more of an Ipswich Town identity rather than, you know, the away kits being worn by Dynamo Zagreb over in Europe or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So I'd like something that's bespoke. I've always like humble kits, me, but yeah, I'm down with whatever as long as, as, long as it feels like it's Ipswich's identity. It's good for me. Coxie's heard it's Hummel. Uh, Hummel. Um, I always get asked, because obviously people know, it, well, I bet, owners on the show so you must have talked to owners at some point yeah. i don't care i just don't care enough you to won't buy it anyway no but i don't <laughs> care enough to want to know ask the question do you know what i mean like yeah 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 i it's don't care <laughs> it's, it, it, it's it's your brand it's the look it's you know what the team are gonna wear i don't care you know no because you don't celebrate a kit you celebrate a team and and yeah. You could stick them in a black bin bag next year. If they win the league title in 20 years' time, some company will bring out a black bin bag 
retro shirt because that was successful. <laughs> it, no one's going to bring a shirt out that Aaron and Nolly Hawkins wore. No, that's true. I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that 91, 92 kit was pretty, was fire, wasn't it? It's good. Good stretch. It was good. Talking of which, obviously, last night we had Romeo Zondervan and Craig Forrest on the show. Uh, Matt, I know you've picked out a, a favourite moment as, mm. as we close. Just tell the people at home that perhaps haven't seen it why they should go and check it out and why this was your favourite moment as, as as we round up. Yeah, I mean, why, why, well, why should you check it out? I mean, there we are talking about a team that actually delivered. There's a lot, you know, we have a lot of talk on this platform, don't we? If we can do this, we've seen it tonight. If we can do this, if we can, you know, get so-and-so in, blah, blah, blah. This was a team that actually delivered against the odds because, you know, the season before, 1991, we finished... 14th, John Lowell's first season back in football. He had a year break after he ended his, whatever it was, 30-odd year connection with um, West Ham as a player and a manager. Um, and we finished 14th and, you know, as Craig Forrest said, we looked like we were just treading water and then absolute fireworks that night, you know, in, in 91 and 92. It's the first, as we said earlier at the top of the show, it's the first time Craig and Romeo have spoken since Romeo left the club to go to NAC Breda in Holland. So that's 30-year gap. Yeah, and it was just great to hear, you know, what it was like behind the scenes and what John Lyle was like at training. And it, for, for personally, I mean, I chose out a clip you'll see on social media this week about Johnny Walk because Walkie was such a huge Gonna see it now. was a huge presence for me as a as a kid. You know, he was I got my junior blues birthday card from him. I was absolutely gutted when he left for Liverpool that first spell. And then he obviously comes back to the club, and um, just tremendous. And how they talk about Walkie, you know, in terms of what he was like as a leader in the dressing room, what he could deliver as a player. As Craig says he's a top, top tier player. Be worth absolute fortune now. And Romeo's saying, you know, he was fantastic finisher from set pieces. He could head. He would arrive in the box. All the things that Kieran McKenna has actually said this season that we've not delivered on, mm. i.e. going from set pieces. If you don't score from set pieces, you won't get out of this division. And I say, you know, can Walkie still do a job for us next season? <laughs> well, this is it. We spoke to even even tonight's show. We mentioned how we just if we had a few goals from 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 corners, how the season could have mm. been uh, could have been different. And obviously what you're about to see is a clip from yesterday's special where they talk about that very thing. The weapon of John Walk popping up with a goal from a corner. Please do check out. Check it out. We are back again on Wednesday of the time machine. Uh, but as Adrian. I think it was Adrian Garrett has said in the chat. Great show. Like the season. Still on. Keep it going. We will do our best to keep it going through the summer. Keep the community, the family of Talking Town together. You can support us through Ko-Fi or by becoming a, a YouTube member if you are you feel a, a part of the family and, and you and you want to do so. But for tonight, we are done. We are dusted. Thank you, you for all that have come on. I'm just what they call in business, padding a little bit of time while I find the clip. <laughs> and, um, you know, trialing for the gig for Town Tour TV. And I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, from now, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. You know, that that hit, that, that made me better. I, I think Walkie, he was experienced at the back, together with Linigan at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think he, he was one of these players, you had the confidence that everything would be yeah. okay. Yeah. When he got the ball, you know, he yeah, was yeah. so calm, experienced, yeah. played the ball. He made us better. He made us better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was such yeah. a figurehead to us. He was like, as, as a little kid, he was my favourite player. And I'd, in the Junior Blues, I'd get a card from him, you know, properly signed. <laughs> but, you know, as you get older and he returns to the club, it was like, I don't know, it just, it just it felt like homely. Do you know what I mean? It felt like everything was going to be okay because Walkie's return to Portland Road. That's well, kind of I, I mean, from, I don't know if you could tell me differently, but I've never been able to find anybody in Ipswich that have a bad word to say about Walkie. Yeah, yeah, time really. for everybody. I mean, this guy in the modern day, going back, he was a superstar. He was a oh, top, yeah. top tier player. He was a leading goal scorer, I believe, from midfield at, at Liverpool. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. an absolute legend. I mean, it, 30 plus goals. Top draw. Yeah. I was going to yeah, say, when he, when he came back, Craig, would, obviously, and you do your finishing in training, was he still the best finisher at the club, even though he was playing centre half? Um, yeah, probably was. I mean, uh, certainly from the heading point of view, uh, like I've never seen a guy be able to head the ball from both sides, diagonal balls, uh, and be able to almost disguise them. I mean, he was, uh, he was always, well, he would even say it, he was, I'm three days ahead of you. 
<laughs> Great impression. Yeah. He was he was he was unbelievable also with corners. The goals he scored with his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good corners. That was his timing was perfect. Ipswich have struggled with that all season. This season, Romeo, we've not scored. I think we've scored one goal from a corner all season. Forty-six this league season. games. Oh well, shows you that the club is club is missing a player like him. Yeah, someone who can score with his head. I wonder if he could still do a job next season for us. <laughs> well, <laughs> knowing knowing probably. him, he probably will. <laughs> yeah, probably the third set. I can imagine he probably would. It's always, always nice. Sure. It's always nice to have a weapon. Uh, you know, well, I mean, John was you know in his heyday was obviously a midfield player, but. It's always good to have uh, a you know center backs or a center back that can pick up goals. 